Wayfinder's early access release is almost here and you're all probably thinking about which character you want to start with or what the different characters are in the first place, what they do, what abilities they have. In this video we'll go through all the characters available at the launch of Wayfinder, not just the free ones you can start with but also the characters you can immediately unlock potentially if you choose to start with the higher tier founders pack and you decide to use one of your character tokens for unlocking. Before we start, I'm covering all aspects of Wayfinder from guides to news, so if you're interested in more videos, subscribe to the channel. So the most basic aspect to know about the game is that Wayfinder is a character-based action RPG and you will be choosing from already existing characters with their own backstories, personalities, playstyles and abilities. And as you unlock more of them, you can just choose whoever you want to play as, so it isn't a permanent choice. And you will also be able to test them in the tutorial at the beginning if you don't know who you want to choose. Characters in Wayfinder are currently split into three groups, so-called archetypes. Arcanists, survivalists and warmasters. And sticking to one of these archetypes will also have its own progression, so I would say it's a good idea to stick to one of them, but just know that it exists. Each character has four abilities and a passive, and while your abilities with the characters will be fixed and you can't mix them, what weapons you can play with is completely up to you. You will be able to use different weapons on different Wayfinders, so I recommend choosing who you like based on the abilities or the looks, and not the weapons themselves. But as I said, you can change things later anyway. So with those basics out of the way, let's get into the Wayfinders. Starting with the three free options to start with, the first Wayfinder is Vingrave. Vingrave is a close combat specialist paladin type character of the Warmaster's archetype and they excel at defensive gameplay through healing and shielding themselves or their allies. Wingrave's first ability is called Righteous Strike, which is a powerful slash of radiant light in front of him which damages enemies and causes an explosion of healing energy that heals you or your allies. Righteous Strike's cooldown is also refreshed if Wingrave does a melee finisher. Radiant Pulse is Wingrave's shielding ability that gives bonus defense to you and your allies standing behind but also blocks all projectiles coming from the front, so you can see already that Wingrave is somewhat of a supportive character. Judgment is another supportive ability that judges all enemies around Wingrave and marks them, and anyone hitting these judged enemies will be healed for a small amount of their HP. Finally, Wingrave's ultimate ability is Divine Aegis, casting a powerful protective barrier around you, making everyone inside this barrier completely immune to damage, while also healing them for the duration of the ability. And then Wingrave's passive ability is called Healing Pulse, which is a passive healing ability that activates each time you do a melee combo finisher, healing either you or one of your allies. Silo the Tactician is the second starting character for everyone and he is one of the survivalists archetype focusing on a mixture of melee and ranged combat and he utilizes bombs and other tactical tools to control the battlefield and debuff enemies to help you out. Firebomb is a grenade you can toss at your enemies that will ignite them and will also deal damage over time to them and is an ability that has three charges you can stack up and use as you like. Oil Bomb is another grenade in Silo's toolkit which is more of a debuffing ability that slows enemies and leaves them with the oil status effect and this ability is special as it has a chain reaction with the Firebomb ability we just talked about that can ignite the oil for a combo. Additionally, using Oil Bomb also recharges one stack of your Firebomb. Then Proto-Clone is a distracting ability for Silo that they can use to jump back and leave a clone on the ground that will taunt all nearby enemies to attack it until expiration. Excellent for some bonus defense if Silo is alone. Lastly, Silo's ultimate ability is Arc Nemesis, sending his drone buddy ahead to shock and slow all enemies around it for the duration, while also dealing quite a lot of damage. And then Silo's passive ability is that they deal 10% increased damage, either melee or ranged, to enemies that are debuffed by any of the status effects available in the game, so as you can see it's connected to all of his abilities causing status effects. Our third character available to everyone will be Nis. She is an Arcanist archetype character and a rogue focusing on dealing as much damage as possible and her whole character is built around this one goal in mind, specifically recommended to people who like rogue type characters. Niskan Shadow Step, which is a dash ability to jump through enemies in a straight line and damage them, with an after effect of a shadow of Nis dealing additional damage after a quick pause. This ability has two charges, and on upgrading it, it will also be a source of damage buff you can apply on yourself and your allies. Umbral Aura is your second ability that surrounds you with an aura that will damage a nearby enemy upon dodging for the next three uses for yourself and one for your allies around you. Then Vengeful Shade is both a defensive and an offensive ability where Nis jumps into the air to throw daggers at her enemies, 
during which she becomes completely immune to all damage, and as a follow-up you can either combo a slam attack from it, or choose to dodge which will cause Ness to leap back into safety. Her ultimate ability is called Gloom Shroud that connects everything together and allows her to use Shadow Step infinitely for 10 seconds, and upon upgrading this ability it will also receive the effects of Umbral Aura to be even stronger, allowing Nis to use almost all of her abilities at the same time. And then the cream of the top is Nis's passive ability called Lingering Shadow which gives her a stacking attack power buff each time she dodges, which she does a lot, making her playstyle very fast paced and using a lot of abilities. Our next character will require either a use of a character token from the Founders Pack or an exclusive unlock through the higher tiers to use them immediately. Sanju is another Vormaster archetype character and possibly one of the coolest characters so far in the game with very unique mechanics of her taunting enemies like a tank and buffing her allies to become stronger. This time let's start with her passive ability called Crowd Favorite, which is a unique blue bar at the bottom of your screen that increases as Sanja taunts enemies around her, and the bigger the bar the stronger and more powerful she becomes. Her first ability is Gladiator Pummel, which is a gigantic punch against enemies, but this ability can be held for a short time, during which Sanja performs a funny bonus taunt animation, followed by a final punch. Holding down the ability is what causes the taunt animation and is one of the main ways to build up your crowd favorite blue bar. Gladiator Pummel has three charges you can use. Her second ability is Gain Favor, which is also the other ability that can build up your crowd favorite. This ability is a power-up that you can hold, charging Senja and taunting enemies around her, while also buffing all allies' weapon power and ability power for 10 seconds at the end. Those are the two abilities built around her unique mechanic, which I think are super fun and creative, so I can't wait to test it out myself. Then we have Lightning Grasp, basically a pull ability for Senja, and it will pull all enemies in front of her in a cone into close range, allowing her to attack them, giving her some more control and tanking on the battlefield. Then Grand Finale is her ultimate skill, taking the form of a lightning spear and flying towards enemies in front of her to deal massive amounts of damage, and executing Grand Finale will also fully fill your blue bar, your crowd favorite passive ability, charging Senja immediately to full power. Kairos is a fan favorite Wayfinder, and it is the second Arcanist archetype character available, and as you guessed then, it is also a damage oriented Wayfinder for those who prefer magical users over rogues. Kairos' first ability is called Savage Rake, clawing in front of him with dark powers, damaging all enemies in front, that has two charges by default, and will have a bonus mechanic once we get to his passive. Siphon Radiant is a special wave ability that unleashes energy around Kairos to damage enemies around and gather arcane power, but it also reduces the cooldown of your abilities. Arcane power is once again connected to the passive ability of his and is going to be very important later. Arcane Focus is your third ability that marks enemies in an area, making them essentially a time bomb that will explode after 8 seconds or even after dealing enough damage to them for an earlier boom. Finally, the ultimate ability of his is Hand of Reckoning, summoning a giant storm of dark magic to deal massive amounts of damage as it crushes down into the ground in an area in front of you. Now we finally arrive to Kairos' passive ability, Arcane Fragments, which allows Kairos to gather arcane power from their enemies through some of his abilities, and these arcane fragments can be exchanged for your first ability, Savage Rake, without using any of its two charges, so you can spam that ability for even more steady damage, and as you upgrade your abilities it will have multiple effects and combos, making the ability even stronger. Then we arrived at the final character available at launch, Venomous the Alchemist, a survivalist archetype wayfinder specializing around using poison to deal a lot of damage to enemies and using that very same poison to heal allies around them. Let's start with her passive again, since it is an important core ability called Master of Venoms. Each time Venomous deals damage with their weapon, they will put a damage over time Venom on the enemy that can stack up to 5 times. If Venomous attacks a target with 5 stacks again with their weapon, a poison cloud will spawn at the area and this effect can only happen once every 5 seconds. Now their first ability is Transfusion, shooting a volley of poison needles, locking onto enemies and damaging them, and upon impact these needles also spawn healing orbs floating from the enemies, healing your allies as a healing overtime effect based on the number of poison stacks on the enemy. So you will want to first poison your enemies and then use Transfusion. Vampiric Blast is a combo ability that launches a bomb at enemies that can absorb up to 5 of your spawned poison clouds I mentioned earlier with the passive, 
and after a delay, this bomb will explode and deal a lot of damage to enemies and also heal your nearby allies based on the number of clouds it absorbed. Since it seems poison clouds are pretty important, your third ability, Venom Thrusters, is a dash ability that lets you dash in a direction and leave a poison cloud behind you to use later. Now her ultimate is also pretty unique since Deep Breath will be a massive explosion of poison that adds 5 stacks of empowered venom on all enemies. Note that this empowered venom is separate from your normal poison stacks but counts as 5 bonus stacks when it comes to abilities like Transfusion or Master of Venoms that use your poison stacks from enemies. So again, a very nice combo to remember as you will be able to use 10 stacks of poison instead of the normal 5. But those are all the classes available on the early access launch of Wayfinder. As I said, for the base packages it will be only Vingrave, Silo and Nis. but all packages above will have a chance to use their character unlock tokens to instantly play any of these other characters in case that's what you want to do. These are just the basic introductions to Wayfinders, of course when the game will be out I will go more in depth with all of them separately, but for now that is all for this introduction video everyone. Thank you for watching, remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and it helped you, have a wonderful day and I'll see you all the next time.